super creamy, super delicious, and then the crunchy and salty bite of the bacon on the outside. You have to try these at home. Have a super sweet Christmas season. Hey everyone, I'm Jen Barney, a pastry chef and owner of Meringue Bakery in La Crosse, Wisconsin. I was born and raised in Stanley, Wisconsin, and I'm very proud to come from a long line of dairy farmers. So today, I've created a recipe that both celebrates and supports our awesome farmers. Cookies and cream cow fudge. The first step is to make the black cow spots. I'll take my sugar, cream cheese, evaporated milk, and butter. This fudge will look like a Holstein cow, which is a white cow that has black spots. It's really the cow of my people. It's what we farmed when we were growing up. It's a really good idea to stir this continuously. And as you see it cook, it's not uncommon for you to see little brown bits that are forming at the base. That's normal, and you can strain that out later on. It doesn't ruin the recipe. I'll add in a little bit of cream. and I'll pull it from the burner. Once this cools down, I'll grab a spatula and pour it into a bowl. From here, you can add your chocolate, your almond extract, or really any extract that you prefer, and a pinch of salt. This comes together pretty quickly. Keep stirring it. Lastly, you just have to spread this out onto a sheet pan. I'm using a half sheet pan. I'd say give it about 30 minutes and you'll be ready to make your spots. Our dark fudge has hardened and I put on a set of gloves, not necessary, but certainly more hygienic. Easiest part here, and it's actually the most fun part of this whole recipe, is just creating these spots. It's better when they're not perfect. So we're looking for a random assortment of ball sizes we're looking for a really natural, organic looking cow spot pattern. We'll take all of these spots and head to the freezer with them. As our dark chocolate spots are chilling in the fridge, I've gone ahead and started our white chocolate fudge. Now this recipe is almost exactly the same as before, only this time it's a little bit larger size and we're using white chocolate instead of dark chocolate. I'm transferring this into another bowl so it stops cooking. I'm also adding a little bit of almond extract. And we have some heavy cream as well. And as always, a pinch of salt. Lastly, I'll add my white chocolate. And I continuously stir while it's melting. And we're ready to assemble. Take the black spots fresh out of the fridge, and I put about half of them down. Now, I am able to pour my white fudge in, all the way in, and I place the last half of the chocolate spots right on top. Here we have our finished cookies and cream cow fudge, but you know what? I need some official taste testers here. This is my family. I have Millie, my son Wyatt, and my husband Brian. Let's dig in. Thank you so much, and happy holidays from Wisconsin. Thanks, Jennifer. I know a few boys in my house who would go crazy for that cow fudge. Okay, so we are only halfway through the Midwest. Coming up, you don't want to miss more amazing recipes, this time from Missouri and North Dakota.
Welcome back to the Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. Next up on our Midwest Roundup, we've got a chef turning Missouri's famous gooey butter cake into a cookie. And bonus points, this is a fun one to make with the kids. Check it out. Hey everyone, I'm Serena Geller, the food writer behind the Ritzy Mom Blog. But most importantly, I am the mother of these two beautiful girls. My daughters, Bea and Tilly, are going to help me today with a really easy and fun cookie recipe that is just perfect for the holidays. This gooey butter cookie is my take on a very classic St. Louis dessert, the gooey butter cake. It is always the crowd favorite, so I decided to put my own spin on it and turn it into a cookie. You are going to love it. So girls, let's get baking. Yay, cookie time! Okay, great, let's get started, girls. So B, I'm gonna just move you over away from the mixer so that I can show everybody what we're gonna do first. The first step, I have some salted butter and some full fat cream cheese. They're both soft and we're just gonna give it a quick blend. And once that gets going, we're gonna add some granulated sugar. And the really great thing about gooey butter cake and gooey butter cookies is that it's a fluffy cookie. It has a hint of vanilla and kind of a cheesecake, butter cake mixed together, which is truly beautiful. We're gonna add some whole eggs and this hint of vanilla that gives it that special flavor. While this is mixing, I'm gonna need your help, girls. Okay. You're gonna help me with the dry ingredients, okay? So this is our baking powder. We have some pre-measured flour all ready for the girls, and to that we're gonna first add baking powder. Tilly, do you wanna tell everybody what the baking powder does? It makes them coffee. It absolutely does. This is what's gonna, go ahead and put it in here, and you can start mixing that up. And to balance that out, what are we gonna do? What's this, remember? Corn. Yes, it's the cornstarch, and the cornstarch is gonna soften that cookie. It's gonna add the gooeyness and tenderize it. And then you did a great job with that. And we're gonna add a little bit of sea salt. So I'm gonna stop the mixer. I'm gonna just scrape down the bowl and get the bottom of the bowl because some stuff gets stuck down there and we don't want that. And what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna turn the mixer to the lowest speed. We're gonna gradually add in the ingredients very lightly so that they don't clump or make the cookie dense. And we're just gonna let that mix. And what I like to do, you do have to chill this dough. It's a very, very soft dough. It gets sticky, but it's great. But we do have to chill it. So in order to do that for kids, I make it a little bit easier by putting it into these little containers. That makes it super easy to scoop out the dough. So we're going to scrape this out and give it a final mix. And I'm just going to portion a little bit out. See, I told you these were messy cookies, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now that the dough is chilled, we are ready for the next step, which is the most fun of all of this, and that is going to be scooping out, making little balls, rolling it in powdered sugar, and baking up the cookies. So we're gonna take a scoop, and since this dough is really sticky, you're gonna take a little bit of powdered sugar, rub it between your hands, and that's gonna stop it from being too sticky. Right? Yes, all right. Okay, and we're gonna put a dough ball in our hands, and just roll it into a little ball, and then what do we do? It's perfect. Drop it in there, and this is gonna give it that really snow-covered, crackled look that is perfect for a holiday cookie. And you're gonna put that right on the baking sheet. I like to put six cookies per baking sheet just to give it room to spread. These don't spread too much. Okay, girls, we have the best cookies ever, ready to eat. Go ahead, these are freshly baked, warm cookies, and that's one of the really great things about these cookies. You can eat them warm or cold, however you want them, and they're still extra gooey and extra delicious. Girls, did you have fun today? Yes. Were these the best cookies? Yes. Happy holidays from Missouri. Hi, folks. I'm Kevin Scharf, chef and owner of Brazen Open Kitchen here in my hometown, Dubuque, Iowa. Growing up, Scotch Roos were a quintessential celebration treat for us. At any potluck, you could always expect someone to show up with these amazing chocolate peanut butter delights. My Scotch Rookie recipe is a reimagined version with just a little twist. So let's get baking. We're gonna take our flour, baking soda, baking powder, and salt, and we wanna combine them. It's important to make sure that you whisk so everything is combined evenly. We're gonna to move to the stand mixer and we are going to cream our butter and or uh, margarine. I personally enjoy using 50-50. Uh, so butter will give you crispy and the margarine is going to help you get that chewiness that you're looking for. 
Once your butter and margarine is uh, well whipped, we are going to add our brown sugar, our peanut butter, cream, our sugar, and our peanut butter, and add our egg and butterscotch extract. Mix on low until well combined. The next step in our recipe is to combine our dry ingredients with the wet ingredients. We want to add our crispy rice cereal. And we're gonna add our melted butterscotch chips to know when you've got them melted correctly and to the right uh, temperature before you add to the dough. You're looking for the consistency of creamy peanut butter. I like to shape uh, these cookies into about a two tablespoon size uh, dough ball. You can find a uh, ice cream scoop that is about two tablespoons to create a perfect shaped ball. And all we're gonna do is Roll them in our rice cereal. I am putting the, uh, the cookie dough balls directly on a nonstick uh, pan, but if you don't have a nonstick pan, it is wise to use parchment paper. Let's work on our chocolate ganache. We have our heavy cream with our chocolate in a heat resistant bowl. Pour the cream once it comes to a simmer over the chocolate and just gently give it a stir until it becomes smooth. We've put the cookies on a wire rack over parchment. This is where you bring the whole family in and have a little fun with it. My favorite is to use a wire whisk and we can drizzle them over the top. Now that our ganache has set, we have our scotch rookies with just a little sprinkle of sea salt. From all of us here at Brazen Open Kitchen, have a super sweet holiday season. Hey everyone, I'm Angela Garbitz and I'm coming to you from the Cornhusker State, Nebraska. I'm here in my bakery, Goldenrod Pastries, and today I'm sharing one of my favorite recipes with you, triple chocolate corn cookies. Let's get baking. So we are gonna start with our creamed vegetable shortening and brown sugar, and I've done that step already. If you prefer to use butter, go right ahead. We do dairy-free. I'm gonna add two eggs. I love these cookies. The first time I made them, I was just obsessed. And then we're also gonna add the baking soda and the salt. I'm gonna mix these all together. So now I'm going to add in my cocoa powder, the first part of a triple chocolate corn cookie. We're going to be adding our sorghum flour and cornmeal next. And Goldenrod Pastries is a gluten-free bakery and I've actually found that flours like sorghum make uh, the most tender cookie. So it's perfect for this. We're gonna add sorghum flour and we're gonna add our cornmeal, really nice fine cornmeal and get this all combined. Okay, we're gonna add in some vanilla extract and that's gonna really bring the whole dough together. The great thing about doing a gluten-free cookie is that you can't over mix it because you're not forming gluten, it's not gonna get too tough. All right, we are going to add in our dark chocolate and get this all combined. So we are going to shape these cookies. I have a baking sheet here lined with parchment we have some sugar to roll the cookies in. Get a nice scoop here, drop that in the sugar. I just feel like that sugar adds such a nice little touch and a nice texture on the outside of the cookie. I'm gonna keep shaping these and fill up the tray. So I have just been melting some milk chocolate over here over a hot water bath. And so we are ready to dip our cookies. This is the third part of our triple chocolate cookies. We have the cocoa powder, we have the dark chocolate chunks, and now we have milk chocolate melted for the outside. So we have our finished cookies and I love to do just like a little half dip. Looks so nice. We're gonna pop these on another sheet tray so that they can cool before we put them out on display. So we have one last cookie that is dipped in our milk chocolate and 
I have these really, really cute little snowflake sprinkles that I'm gonna put on the warm milk chocolate. I just pulled my cookies out of the fridge. The chocolate is nice and set and I'm ready to plate them. We use the corn flour, the cornmeal, the sorghum flour, all grains that are grown here in Nebraska. I just love this cookie. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays from Nebraska. Still ahead, we're about to wrap up our time in the Midwest with North and South Dakota. Then we're headed to the Southwest. We'll have more after this. We are cruising through the Midwest with just two states to go. So let's head over to the Dakotas and see what they're baking up. Hi there, Chef Stephanie Miller from North Dakota here. In my home state, the cuisine is heavily influenced by different cultures, including Scandinavia. These little waffle cones or krumkaka originally hail from Norway. They might look fancy, but I promise you, if you can make waffles, you will be able to make these adorable cookies. So let's get started with our batter. First, we are gonna start with some butter and sugar. And we're gonna cream this together for a little bit just until it's nice and fluffy. This usually takes about 30 seconds or so. Take your time, move the bowl around. And once the sugar is kind of dissolved, you can take the mixer up a little bit higher. Once this is creamed, we're gonna add our eggs, uh, just one at a time, till they're well incorporated. One more, last one. All right. This is the consistency you're looking for. After we added the eggs, we are going to wanna to add the vanilla and the cardamom. And the cardamom is kind of just the, the real flavor and star of the show. It just really makes for a delicious cookie, in my opinion that as well. All right, after we have the vanilla and the cardamom added, we're gonna wanna add our milk and a little bit more. I would probably say in three batches would be great. All right, once we kinda have all of our wet ingredients incorporated, uh, we're gonna wanna add our flour, the last ingredient. And again, I add this probably in about two batches. Again, start it on slow, just so you don't have flour everywhere. And we just kinda wanna mix this until we don't see any dry flour. Okay, this looks great.
Well, we have our batter here. It's nice, it's smooth, it is ready to go. Um, we have our machine, it's plugged in as well. So I am just going to open this up. And I usually go, at least when I first start, one at a time until I really get the hang of it. Take about, I would say, one, one and a half teaspoons of batter. It does not take much. And just put it right in the center, just like that. Close it. Lock it. We're just gonna wait for about a minute until the batter is nice golden brown, and then we'll take them out. So just take a little offset spatula so you don't burn your fingers. Take it onto a board, and you wanna work super quick. The batter does dry very quickly. And just roll it on the cone, just like this. And just kinda keep it on that cone for about 10 seconds, just so the dough and the cookie really set and make it um, very nice, nicely shaped. Wiggle the, the cone a little bit and then we can just put it right on there. How beautiful is that? All right, we can make another one now. Normally for Christmas, a bunch of my family comes together and makes this at, at, the, uh, at the kitchen table, which is really fun. I've been making krumkaka cookies since I was, I wouldn't say born, but um, probably like three or four, I was sitting on the kitchen counter with my grandma, with my mom, uh, and we were rolling these, um, almost rolling and eating at the same exact speed. I'm just gonna wiggle it off the cone, place it here. These look great, and we are ready to make our whipped cream filling. All right, once we have our krumkaka cookies and they are nice and cooled, we are ready to work on our whipped cream filling. We have some heavy cream in our bowl, and we're gonna make our whipped cream filling. Start on low, don't splatter it everywhere. And we're looking for, just to kinda get a little bit of air into the whipped cream, or into the cream, and then we'll incorporate our other ingredients. Okay, once we incorporated a little bit of air into the cream, you can go ahead and add the rest of your ingredients. I kind of like mine a little on the less sweet side, so not too much powdered sugar. A Little bit of vanilla. Okay, now that we have our whipped cream filling ready to go, we are going to put it in our piping bag and fill these. And you could eat these, honestly, by themselves. I do that all the time. But since it's the holidays, we want it to be a little bit more festive. Once you do fill these with whipped cream, you want to serve them right away. Beautiful. Oh, these are going to be great and delicious. Look at those. Here are your beautiful cardamom cream caca cookies filled with whipped cream. Have a very Merry Christmas and a happy holidays. Enjoy. The Great American Holiday Cookie Swap on Today All Day continues right after this.
And we're back, ready for our next holiday cookie. Take a look. Hi everyone, Chef Chris Hanmer here. I'm the owner of CH Patisserie in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. The official dessert of the Mount Rushmore State is Kugan, a traditional German pastry. Today I'll be making a cookie that honors it, a spice cherry and dark chocolate sandwich cookie. All right, and the first step to making the cookies, we're gonna make the cherry ganache. So in the pot, I have my corn syrup. I'm going to add my cherry puree. And we're also going to add our vanilla. It doesn't take a whole lot of time for the puree to get warm. We don't want it to be too hot because we don't want to burn the chocolate actually. So once this just comes to a simmer, we're good. We're going to go ahead and pour it right over the chocolate. And now we're going to give it a couple stirs here just to make sure that the chocolate and the cherry puree get incorporated. So we're going to go ahead and put the immersion blender in. And that's gonna make a nice smooth emulsion. Now we're gonna slowly start adding the pieces of butter, one or two pieces at a time. You can see the consistency of the ganache has changed now. In, in the pastry world, we like to say the ganache has a little bit of elasticity to it. So I'm just gonna take some plastic wrap, put it on the bowl, place it on the counter for 24 hours, and we'll be ready to fill the cookies. And now it's time to mix the cookie dough. In my bowl here, I have the separated egg yolks. To that, I'm gonna turn the mixer on a little bit. I'm gonna start adding my granulated sugar. At this point, I'm gonna turn off the mixer, and you can see the egg yolks and sugar are already nice and light. This, this is room temperature butter, it needs to be nice and soft. I'm gonna start adding a little bit at a time. So we're gonna add the flour, the cinnamon, the ginger, the baking powder, and the salt all goes into the bowl. So we're just gonna mix this nice and gentle until it forms a nice dough. And that's it, the dough is ready. We're gonna take it off of the mixer. I'm gonna place it down right onto plastic. I'm just gonna fold it over. And the thinner we can get this, the, the easier it's gonna be um, to roll it out at home. Just pressing by hand is fine. And now we're gonna chill this overnight and we'll be ready to roll the cookies out. For this cookie dough, you wanna go to about, you know, between a quarter and, eight, and an eighth inch. So now I have my cutter and now I'm gonna punch out the cookies right here and start laying them on the tray. So we're gonna put these in the oven at 350 degrees for about eight to 10 minutes. Some ovens a little bit longer, some a little bit less until they're nice and golden brown around the edges and maybe a tiny bit blonde. All right, so now it's time to finish the cookies. We have our baked cookies that we put on a cooling rack to get them down to room temperature. So we're gonna put about a tablespoon of filling in the center of each cookie, both face side up, so baked side up. We're gonna make a nice little uh, mark right there on each one. So now we're just gonna take the top layer, sandwich it right on the top. Dusting them with powdered sugar really adds that kind of finishing touch to it. And I'm ready to give it a taste. As you can see, we have this beautiful chocolate layers in between. The spice is perfect. It's crispy and light and the butteriness of the cookie along with the ganache. I can't wait for you guys to try this at home. Well, that ends our time in the Midwest. Up next, we are heading southwest with our own Savannah Guthrie, honoring her home state of Arizona. You won't want to miss it. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to today's Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. We are cruising across the country. We visited chefs from almost 40 states in the Northeast, the South, and the Midwest, and we still have plenty of great recipes to go. Throughout the show, look for this QR code that will appear at the bottom of your screen for recipes and for more information on how you can give back this season. Feeding America, the country's largest network of food banks, is working to fight food insecurity. So scan that code with your smartphone to find out how you can volunteer or donate to help your local food banks this holiday season. Next up, the beautiful Southwest. Kicking things off, here is our very own Savannah Guthrie, who grew up in Tucson, Arizona. Merry Christmas and happy holidays, everybody. It's Savannah. You may have heard I've been working on my cooking skills and starting from scratch. They're a little rusty, but one thing I have loved to do is bake. And today we are going to do a snickerdoodle, a recipe I've wanted to master but have never really been able to do. Now, I'm from Arizona, I grew up there, I went to the U of A, 
This is not an Arizona cookie, but we're gonna make it Arizona style. So come along, we're gonna show you how to make a snickerdoodle. Okay, the first step is, of course, our dry ingredients. We have flour, we're gonna add salt, baking soda, cream of tartar, that's the snickerdoodle specialty. We're gonna whisk it all together, get it nice and mixed up. There is one ingredient in these dry ingredients that you gotta add, and it is cinnamon, because that's what's gonna give it that yummy snickerdoodle flavor. Like most baking recipes, they're dry ingredients, they're wet ingredients. We already have butter and sugar that have been creamed together. And now we're gonna add two eggs and some vanilla. Don't forget the dry ingredients. It will not turn out too well. Put them in there. Usually they tell you to do it a little bit at a time. If you're really gutsy, you can try to put the dry ingredients, keep adding as it's still stirring, but that can make kind of a mess you might end up wearing more of your dry ingredients than end up in the bowl. If your patient's challenged, like me, you don't wanna do it. You just wanna dump it all in there, but gotta read the directions, especially with baking. If I were home, I'd be listening to Taylor Swift and, you know, I'd be having a glass of wine or a cocktail. So if you're home and you're doing this, turn up the music and maybe, you know, pour a little glass of wine or a cocktail, have fun. So you've got your dough, now we're going to form our dough balls. This is where we're gonna add a little Arizona, just for fun, because why not? So you make your dough balls, you use an ice cream scoop, they'll be nice and even, I never do that at home. And then just drop it in your sprinkles and roll it around, you can use this spoon. Now look, this is where you can be creative and have fun, you can do double trouble, do a little gold in there, and that's it. Even it off your dough balls, drop it in, take a glass of wine, have a swig, have your fun. You want to try to space these about two inches apart. Love anything sweet. When I bake, they're always nearby because they like to crack the eggs, they like to be, they like to participate, and mostly they like to lick the spoon. So when I was a little girl, my mom, when she baked, which was not that often, but when she did, she would always use a hand mixer that had two of those prongs, so it was one for Savannah, one for Annie. I use a stand mixer like this, so one gets the spatula, one gets the paddle. But I don't know if you're supposed to eat raw cookie dough, but in our house, we do. If you're doing the holidays and you don't want to do the great state of Arizona, you could do red and green. You could, there's a lot of different ways you could make them have a little extra flair. Okay, this tray is done. We're gonna bake it, 350, 12 minutes. Enjoy. Okay, fresh from the oven. Don't these look so pretty? Ah, festive, colorful, the Arizona State flag. And let me just try one. Delicious. Merry Christmas from my family to yours. Hi, my name is Chef Marinigas. I'm coming to you from my restaurant here in Albuquerque. Today we are going to make our steak cookie, the bizcochito. This recipe has been handed down to my family for years and years. We make a big holiday batch every single year. I hope you love our cookies as much as we do. First, you got to make the dough. First, we add our lard, because that's what's going to make them melt in your mouth. After that, you put a little bit of sugar gradually, turn on your mixer and start mixing it until it gets nice and fluffy. You're gonna add your cinnamon, a bit of salt, your ground anise, and you're gonna let that mix in real good. Go ahead and push it down from the sides to make sure everything incorporates real nice. So you're gonna add your egg, let it mix in very nicely. You're gonna add your red wine, so the cheaper the red, the better. <laughs> That's what my mom says. So you put it just a semi-sweet or a sweet red wine, it comes out perfect every time. You're gonna go ahead and scrape down the bowl again to make sure everything's incorporated. So add in your flour. Start with just a little bit. Get it mixing. 
And as it's mixing, you're just gonna add little by little. You want it soft, nice and soft, but you don't want it sticky. At this point, you can add walnuts, pretty much anything you want to. Walnuts are normally not too much part of a bizcochito, but this is something that my family likes to add to make it just a little bit different. All right, it's looking good. After your dough's done, you go ahead and pack it up in your cookie gun. Traditionally, these aren't used as much in bizcochitos here. You normally roll them out, but this is the way my mom likes to do it, so this is the way I'm gonna do it. It makes a pretty little flour, so let's go. Not one of them's the same, it's like a snowflake. Okay, so in the oven they go, 350 for like 15 minutes. All right, you want them to get nice and crispy and brown on the edges. Make sure they're hot when you're gonna cinnamon and sugar them. This makes a big batch. Make sure your family comes and helps you because that's what makes them more fun. And then you get the job done faster. The cookies are done, they're on a plate. My family's ready to eat. Come on guys, cookies are ready. Oh, grab one, come on, come on. Let's go, let's go. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays! Mmm, man, those look so delicious. All right, coming up, we're staying in the sunny Southwest with more creative cookie recipes for your holiday table. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. We are making our way across the country, and next up, it's the Beehive State. Take it away, Utah. Hi, everyone. It's Chef Viet Pham coming to you from Salt Lake City, Utah. I moved to Utah 15 years ago, and I fell in love with the state's mountains, the trails, the people, and its community. Of course, we're known as the Beehive State, so I'm going to pay homage to that nickname. I'm going to make a hot honeycomb chocolate chip cookie. All right, so let's get started making our hot honeycomb candy. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add the sugar first, and then I'm gonna add the water, and then the honey. And then once you have that in there, you're gonna go ahead and start your fire at about a medium high, and you wanna make sure you're constantly stirring. So I'm gonna move this around to get all the sugar mixed up. This should take you probably about, about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how strong your stove is. So right now I'm hitting about 220 degrees and you can see it's getting really foamy and that's the water kind of evaporating. All right, so we're at 300 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the fire. What I have here is the baking soda and the cayenne. I'm gonna go ahead and mix the cayenne in with the baking soda. So you wanna go ahead and pour it in. 
and then you want to start to whisk it very, very fast. And don't be alarmed, the sugar is going to triple in size. And then you'll see it's kind of erupting and then you want to carefully pour it onto your baking pan, your pan. And then that's it. When you add baking soda to the sugar, it starts to form that chemical reaction by fizzing and letting out the gases and it aerates the, the, the candy and it makes it like a honeycomb. So you see all these little holes and it makes it really nice and light and crispy. So now our hot honeycomb has cooled down. Uh, there's a couple ways of breaking it. I like using something sharp like the tip of your um, scissors or an ice pick. You want to look for pieces that are about a dime to a nickel size. So what I have here is just a basic chocolate chip cookie dough. And um, if you don't want chocolate chip cookies, you could use peanut butter cookies, you could use sugar cookies, you could use molasses cookies. Any cookies that are already pre-made in your refrigerator section, you could just go home, cut them up, put them in the oven, and then as soon as you're done, when you take them out, add these guys, and it's gonna add an amazing textural element to it. All right, so the cookies are freshly out of the oven. They're still hot and really soft. This is a crucial moment right now for us to get these shards of hot honeycomb into the cookie. Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard to get them in once the cookie sets. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kinda of just press them in lightly. I'm gonna finish this off with a little bit of flaky salt. And there you have it. This is our Utah hot honeycomb chocolate chip cookies. It tastes amazing. You get that richness from chocolate and that crunch and crisp from the hot honeycomb and you get some of that heat and the salt, it just all comes together. It's so delicious. Happy holidays from our Pretty Bird family to yours. You're a good boy, huh? Hi everyone, I'm Angela Sweetbar, the chef and owner of Queen of Hearts Las Vegas, where we specialize in high tea Vegas style. But what happens in Vegas doesn't always stay in Vegas. So today I'm going to teach you how to make our chocolate chip casino cookies. One bite of these and you've already hit the jackpot. So to start these cookies, we'll first take our butter and we'll put that into our bowl. And then we're going to take both of our sugars. I'll start with the brown sugar. Second, I'll add the white sugar. Next is our eggs. And next I like to add my salt and my vanilla. Do the salt first and then our vanilla. Our next ingredient is gonna be the flour, the chocolate chunks, and the baking soda. And that's gonna go right on top here. And I'm gonna finish it off with my chocolate chunks. I'm gonna go ahead and pop on my gloves and place the dough in the mold. Today we have two kinds of molds. You can either use a tin mold that you spray lightly, like this one, or you could use a silicone mold and you wouldn't have to spray it. Today we're going to use the sprayed tin mold. So I'm going to take my dough and I'm going to pinch off uh, about a teaspoon and place it in my muffin mold. So I've got this dough pressed all into my mold. I'm going to chill it for about five minutes and then I'm going to bake. Okay, so these chocolate chip cookies are plated fresh out of the oven and they've cooled off. So let's go ahead and start adding our sugar paste and fondant decoration. I like to start with the pre-colored fondant. Uh, today we'll start with the basic red, yellow, green, and black. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to place it on this parchment paper and I'm going to roll it out to about the thickness of a nickel. And I'll pick it up a few times just so it doesn't get stuck to anything. Alright, so my cookies are about this size here. And I'm going to take my first cutter and press down evenly and give a little twist. Now to adhere it to the cookie, I'm going to slip to the back side and just use the tiniest dab of water. That little dab of water will make it just moist enough that it'll stick to the top of the cookie. Now that we've got all of our colors on here, let's start with the white fondant. The white fondant is going to add those little casino chip details that make these cookies really iconic. So we've got our white fondant out and we're going to be using different size cutters to get that center shape. And then I'll cut my little detail pieces off of here. I will need four of these per cookie. You're just going to eye these. They don't have to be perfect. And I'll take my little 
my little round cutter and that piece that came out will glue on right into the middle and then we'll take each of our edge pieces and you'll line them up one across from the other and then using this tiny tiny cutter we'll get those little buttons and those will go right in the center. So our casino chocolate chip cookies are all done, but I'm gonna need some help tasting them. Let's bring my staff in. We've got Tin and Jamie, and they're gonna help me try these delicious cookies. Mmm. Mm. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from, from Nevada. Nevada. Thanks, Chef. We are getting ready to head to our last group of states, the Wild West. Gobby Dalkin, Brother Luck, and Michelle Lopez are just some of the amazing chefs coming your way. So stick around. We'll be right back. We've got just one more region to go here on today's Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. Can you believe it? The hours are just flying by. We've been to the Northeast, the Southeast, the Midwest, and the Southwest. So now it's time to head back west for the final frontier of flavor. Let's kick things off in California with Gobby Dawkins' tart and tasty ode to the holidays. Hey guys, it's Gobby Dalkin. I'm a cookbook author and founder of whatsgobbycooking.com and I am from the golden state of California. Today we are making lemon white chocolate chip cookies, which if you've been to California, you know we're obsessed with citrus. It's a play on a traditional sugar cookie and I know you guys are gonna be obsessed. All right, first things first for these sugar cookies, we're gonna cream together our butter and our sugar. So I'm using a combination of brown sugar and white sugar and room temperature butter. You're gonna put that into your sand mixer and really let it cream together for like two to three minutes. Once that's done, you're gonna go ahead and add your egg. And then also to that, I'm gonna add three teaspoons of lemon extract. Then we're just gonna put our mixer back on and mix this together until it's combined. Now we need our dry ingredients. We're just gonna do two and a quarter cups of flour. So I like to scoop and level. So scoop it off and then just take like a knife or anything with a flat edge, level it out. Two and a quarter cups right into our mixer. And this is just all purpose flour. Like no need to buy anything fancy for this recipe. And to that, we're gonna add some baking soda. And then the key to cookies, which I never did as a child because it freaked me out that there's salt in your cookie. Now as a 30 something year old, I'm like, what was I thinking? I've missed, I like, you need the salt to amp up all the flavors. So we're gonna add a little bit of kosher salt and just mix it until all the streaks of flour are gone. 
Okay, that is perfect. Just grab your spatula, scrape down any of that beautiful sugar cookie dough. Last thing we're gonna do, look at this dough. It's like perfect, it's perfectly combined. The last thing we're gonna add to this are the white chocolate chips. So just about 12 ounces, a cup and a bit, and then take your spatula. This is a tricep workout because now your dough is like thick. Stir all this in until it's evenly combined. Okay, so the dough's been in the fridge for two hours. It was painful, but we made it through. It looks the same, but trust me, chilling it makes a difference. And you're just gonna scoop out eight to 12 per baking sheet, nothing crazy. If you're using one of these, you don't even have to roll them into a ball. Um, if you don't have a cookie scoop, flying dough. Uh, do about two tablespoons each. Take the remaining chocolate chips, and we're just gonna put like four or five on top of each cookie and then as they bake, it'll spread out and be like the most perfect Instagrammable cookie you'll ever make. Okay, I'm gonna finish the rest of this tray and then these are gonna go straight into the oven for about nine to 11 minutes at 350 degrees. Okay, these look incredible. We're just gonna carefully transfer these to our serving platter. You guys, my house smells insane. I'm so excited about this. Get them all on here. And then we gotta take a bite because what's a cookie party if you don't eat them all? These are incredible. You're gonna be obsessed. Make them. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from California. Hello everyone, I'm Chef Eduardo Garcia and I am proud to be representing the great state of Montana. I'm the host of the cooking show, Big Sky Kitchen, and the owner of the food brand, Montana Max. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to bake a huckleberry pine tort cookie, inspired by the berries that we pick in the late summer months here in Montana. So the first step in making our huckleberry jam is you have to find some huckleberries. I usually don't find huckleberries until late July. Um, maybe in your part of the country, uh, you'll find them sooner. But uh, huckleberries are a perennial berry uh, they look very much like a blueberry. We'll place four cups of our huckleberries into a small saucepan. Next up, we'll put a quarter cup of lemon juice. I like to add a little acidity to our jam and jelly because they are loaded with so much sugar. We'll add this to our pot. And if we get any of these seeds in here, we just have to scoop those out. Next up, we'll add calcium water, which helps sort of give it that jellied or um, like viscous consistency. So we have a vanilla pod, we've got some cardamom, and we've got honey. When you heat up spices, the flavor jumps up and wakes up. So we're gonna heat this up. I've never counted them, I don't think you could. There's millions of little seeds in a vanilla pod. And we wanna scrape those and make sure they end up in our pot. We'll go with our honey. I think we're doing about half a cup. So we're going to want to add two tablespoons of bourbon. We want to heat it up enough so that honey warms up enough to receive that bourbon. There it goes. It flambéed, which cooked off all the alcohol. We're going to add it to our huckleberry jam. Once our mixture comes to a boil, I'm going to add our pectin and we're going to puree it. So we'll puree it, we'll add it back to the jam, we'll stir it up, and that'll give it a spreadable consistency. Let's see how our pureed mixture is thick and smooth. I've already made my dough, but basically very similar to many cookie recipes, our dough is composed of creamed butter and sugar, flour, but what makes it a Linzer cookie is the ground almond that's present in it. So usually it's a little almond extract and ground almond themselves. This is just a gentle, slow process where we're gonna start always from the center and work out. Bouncing around to all sides here. I'm gonna roll this out to about a quarter inch thick. I'm into that. I can work with that. So now we get to cut our cookies. And so we're gonna go to the very edge, just like this. I'm gonna push down evenly. These are the bottoms, now we'll cut the tops. 
the tops for a Linzer Torque cookie um, are going to have a little window into the interior jam or jelly filling. And just for fun, my brother-in-law made us a great little owl cutout. It's also a bird that I hear every night here in Montana almost. This is a heart cookie cutter and we're going to pop a heart right here into the center of our owl. From here, we'll bake our cookies off at 350 degrees, 8 to 10 minutes. And the next step is a fun one, um, spreading our jam right into the center. Got our jam evenly spread out over our cookies. We'll take our tops, give it a nice gentle just push. Now we want to dust it with a little powdered sugar, aka Blizzarding Montana Snowfall. Now, I'm going to add a touch to this. We've got some Andreosa pine needles. These are edible flowers. It's fine edible silver. Because our state of Montana has such a rich history in mining, and in the history of mining, I thought I can't miss this opportunity. I think that there would have been a miner somewhere on a mountain somewhere that could you have told him about this cookie, even described it to him next to a campfire. A smile would have creased his wrinkled face. I hope you love this cookie as much as I love preparing it for you in honor and in pride of this great state of Montana. Have a delicious and sweet Christmas season. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. I'm Chef Antonia Armenta, representing the Cowboy State, Wyoming. Bonafide Food Love is my catering company and our food truck travels all over the state. When I'm not cooking, I'm an Eagle Medicine woman and I love riding my motorcycle all over the United States. Today, I'm baking The World Needs More Cowboy Cookies, a spin on the classic treat packed with all the best mix-ins. The first step for this recipe is gonna be browning of the butter. The reason that we do that in this particular recipe is because we're honoring the University of Wyoming and uh, the brown and gold. Those are our colors, and the title for these cookies come from the University of Wyoming's tagline, The World Needs More Cowboys. You can see that the butter, your pan is nice and hot. So we're going to continue to stir uh, the butter so that the butter fat browns. And then we're going to pull it off to the side and allow it to cool until it comes back to a solidified state that looks like this. And when it's back to this consistency, you have your beautiful browned butter that creates the caramelized flavor in these cookies. From there, we would add our browned butter into the bowl once it's had an opportunity to cool. So we have one stick of browned butter. We're also going to add one stick of softened butter. And then we'll start adding our sugar to those to cream. The vanilla needs to go into the butter and the sugar. And we'll give that just one more quick spin. We'll then add our dry ingredients. So first, in our flour, we're going to add our baking powder, and our cinnamon. And then we wanna make sure that we're adding our cracked eggs now that the butter and sugar has had an opportunity uh, to cream and come together a little bit. And we're gonna give this another spin and let them combine nicely until it's all together. Then you're going to add in your flour and dry ingredients. We're gonna gently combine the ingredients just until it starts to pull together. Then these cookies have a lot of add-ins. So we first start with the heaviest, with our oatmeal, and let it gently combine for just a few moments. And then I like to add all of the rest of my deliciousness. My family really enjoys craisins instead of raisins, so we put some uh, cranberry, dried cranberry in there. We also love the coconut for the chewy texture and the flavor that it gives. And then you really could use any type of nut, but we prefer pecans. We're just going to lightly combine all of these until it pulls together into a nice batter. I like to say that you can see it start to climb out of the bowl. Once it starts to climb, we're ready to start putting them together. We like to place them on the sheet about two inches apart so that there is room for them to spread. 
And now that we have our cookies on the sheet ready to go, the last and final touch that we love is just a little sprinkle of sea salt. It gives it that wonderful contrast to the sweet. The little bit of salt is so refreshing. Look at these beautiful, the world needs more cowboy cookies. Ready for your Christmas delight. And we hope you have a really happy holidays from Wyoming. Stick around because we have more coming up from our West Coast chefs right after this. Welcome back to the Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. We are in our final region of the United States, the West. And up next, one of YouTube's most popular bakers, the host of Nerdy Nummies. Rosanna, take it away. Hi everyone, it's Rosanna Pancino. I can't wait to share this cozy cookie recipe with you all. I grew up in Seattle and my home state of Washington is known for apples. So to celebrate Washington apples, I'll be showing you how to make these delicious apple cider cookies. Growing up, we had an apple tree in our backyard and every year we would harvest the apples and make fresh apple cider and apple pie for the holidays. Needless to say, my family and I love apples. To start in front of me, I have a large mixing bowl and in it we are going to mix our brown butter, our brown sugar, and our granulated sugar. Then whisk together till well combined. All right, this is looking good. Now we're gonna add some more ingredients. We're gonna add a whole egg, the yolk and the white, plus an extra yolk. We're gonna add some vanilla extract. Delicious. This is an apple cider reduction. If you've never made one of these before, I highly encourage you try it. It smells so good. You don't even need holiday candles when you're making this. The entire house smells like heaven. Now take your whisk again and whisk together till well combined. Now, in a medium bowl, we're gonna mix together our dry ingredients. And here, I already got a bunch of our spices. All that's left to add is three cups of flour. And three. Boop. Once you've got all the ingredients in the bowl, whisk together till well combined. Here we go. We're gonna pour all the dry ingredients into the wet. Boop, 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 boop. And using a wooden spoon, we're gonna mix together. This dough is looking good. Now I'm gonna set it off to the side and get our apples ready. Next step is to peel, core, and cube your apple. I'm using a Honeycrisp because I love them and I think they're perfect for this recipe. 
Once your dough has chilled, it's time to scoop these cookies. And now gently with the palms, you're just gonna press them down to kind of flatten them. While the cookies are baking, we're gonna make some things to sprinkle and enjoy on the top of our cookies, starting with our butter mixture. Over here, I've got two tablespoons of butter, and then you're gonna pour one tablespoon of the apple cider reduction. Next, we're gonna make our sugar mixture, which is just some regular sugar, and then all of my favorite holiday spices. Last but not least, before these cookies are out of the oven, we're gonna make a little homemade icing. In a medium bowl, we're just gonna add all of these ingredients together and mix it up. Once the cookies have baked, give them plenty of time to cool, and now you're ready to decorate. We're gonna take these delicious cookies and make them even more delicious. Start with your butter mixture. Try not to drown your cookie. You just wanna cover the whole top so that your sugar will stick to the cookie. Now, I'm just gonna drizzle, do, 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 all over. They're all done, they're ready to enjoy. I can't even wait to get a plate, you guys. I've gotta have a bite right now. They're just smelling so good. Oh yeah, I know this cookie takes a little bit of time to make from scratch, but it is worth it, you guys. I hope you try it and I hope you enjoy. My name is Chef Brother Luck and I am a restaurant owner from Colorado. Now you might recognize me from Top Chef, but today I'm gonna take you on a journey of my Pikes Peak Snowdrop cookies. Now this is a dish that represents the beauty of my state, living at the base of Pikes Peak. The snow falling, the smell of, of all these toasted nuts and oats. My grandmother left me this recipe, so today I'm gonna share it with you and we're gonna bake together. Step one means uh, we're gonna mix the dry ingredients. So I'm just gonna take this sifter, I'm gonna put that flour in there, I'm gonna put the, the dry ingredients of the baking powder and the baking soda right in there, and we're just gonna give it a little love tap. We're just gonna tap it on the side, get all those lumps out of there, and work it all the way into the bowl. It's like it's snowing. Step two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin to cream our butter. This is one of the most important parts. But instead of butter, we're actually gonna use shortening. Uh, I like to use shortening because my grandmother used shortening. We're gonna mix that with our sugars. We're gonna turn that on, we're gonna start it on low, let it come together. We're gonna cream it until it's nice and smooth. You wanna trust that good food takes time. And you know, just like a good grandmother, she's always gonna tell you that it takes time, baby. It takes time. And I'm gonna turn that down to a lower speed. And we're gonna work in these eggs and this vanilla. So once we get this nice and smooth, all of that slightly incorporated, we're gonna work in our dry ingredients. We've got those two cups of flour, We've got that teaspoon of baking powder and that half teaspoon of baking soda. We're gonna put that oat all the way in there. We're gonna put that coconut right in there. Next, we're gonna sneak in our cornflakes. Now the paddle's gonna break down the cornflakes as we get in there. And then we've got the pecans. We're gonna sneak those in. Once this comes together and it doesn't take long, you'll see this beautiful crumbly cookie mixture. You know you're ready to go. The next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a teaspoon and we're just gonna drop those cookies on there. I like to do smaller cookies, that way they cook a little bit easier. Uh, they don't, they don't uh, spread too much and uh, they don't have to be perfectly pretty. So these go into a 350 degree oven. My house smells amazing and so will yours. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna dust these with, a, with a, a nice little uh, amount of powdered sugar. It's gonna give it that finish, that look that we want, and uh, it'll bring it all together. Oh my goodness. I'm transported to my childhood as we speak. They're good to go. Gorgeous Pikes Peak Snowdrop cookies. I'll go cookie. Happy holidays from my kitchen to yours.
Welcome back to the Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. We're nearing the home stretch with only a few states left. So next up, we head to Idaho with Taylor Duran's chocolate potato chip cookies. Yes, you heard that right. She's combining two of my favorite snacks into one, potato chips and cookies. Take it away, chef. Hi everyone, I'm Taylor Durand, also known as Treats by Tay. I am a baker and content creator coming to you from my home in Idaho. I moved to Idaho when I was 13 and now live here with my husband and two kids. There is so much to love about Idaho, from the national parks to the mountains to the hot springs, and of course our state vegetable, the potato. What can make a chocolate chip cookie even better? Adding some good old fashioned potato chips. They're the perfect blend of salty and sweet and they're super easy to make. I'm going to start with about a cup of potato chips. I like to use kettle cooked just because they are a little bit more crunchy and add a bit of texture to your cookie. And we're just gonna go ahead and crush these up using your hands. And we're not gonna put them in our cookie, but we are going to top our dough with it before we pop them in the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and add half a cup of butter to give it that creamy buttery taste and half a cup of shortening to make sure our cookies don't go flat. We're gonna go ahead and add it in our stand mixer using the paddle attachment. And now you're going to add one cup of brown sugar, half a cup of granulated sugar. You're gonna go ahead and turn it on low and you want it to look light and fluffy. Now that that is well combined, it's looking pretty fluffy, we're gonna go ahead and add two large eggs. And we're going to add one teaspoon of vanilla. And we're going to turn the mixer back on low and mix it until it's well combined. So I have three cups of all-purpose flour I'm gonna go ahead and add into my mixer. One and a half teaspoons of sea salt, I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. And one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. While this is slowly mixing, we are going to take our chocolate. I prefer to use dark chocolate. The bitterness is a perfect mix with that potato chip. A Little bit of salty on the top. Then going to chop it up. You want some chunky pieces and you can do them smaller if you'd like. All right, so we're gonna wanna use about three quarters cup of this chocolate in our cookie dough, and we're gonna wanna save about a quarter of it for the top of our cookie. And mix it all up. Now that this is mixed, we're gonna go ahead and grab our cookie sheet. I like to use a silicone mat. You can absolutely use parchment paper though if you'd like. All right, and I do like to use a scooper. So go ahead and make scoops. You're gonna want about 24 total, about the size of a golf ball and you're going to roll it up in your hands and now you're going to go ahead and roll the top and some of the sides of the potato chip so it looks all crunchy on the top and you're going to want the potato chip side up and I like to use a good amount of potato chips on there just to get that salty crispiness. Now once your dough is all rolled out and dipped into your potato chips I like to add now come the dark chocolate chunks and we're going to go ahead and just shove some pieces in the top of the cookie now that our cookies are ready to go, we're gonna put them in our preheated oven and we're gonna bake them for about 12 to 15 minutes or until they turn a light golden brown. All right, now that our cookies have cooled and they are ready to go, you can dig right into them or share them with others. They're perfect. Super salty and sweet. Merry Christmas from my family to yours. Hi today all day, it's Michelle Lopez. I'm a baker and the woman behind the blog, Hummingbird High, where I share a behind the scenes look of my adventures in the kitchen. I'm joining you from my home in Portland, Oregon. And did you know 99% of the hazelnuts in the United States are grown in Oregon? So in honor of the hazelnut capital of the world, I whipped up a recipe for candied hazelnut chocolate chip cookies that will be perfect to enjoy with friends and family this holiday season. So the first step in making these cookies are to candy the hazelnuts. We're gonna preheat our pan till it gets really nice and hot. We're gonna dump the hazelnuts in there. Now we're gonna add the sugar and finally some water to just bring it all together. So we're just gonna stir this to encourage the sugar to melt and we're gonna be here for about five minutes. Okay, so in the recipe, I instruct you to cook the hazelnut mixture until the sugar starts to seize. So that means that the sugar that we melted down has seized around the hazelnuts, coated them in sugar, which is what you want. And now, I know it's really tempting to stop at this stage, but I promise you, it's worth it to take the extra minute or two again to remelt the sugar, because that'll give it the caramelized toasted flavor we all know and love. I'm gonna turn the heat off, 
we're actually going to stir in the salt for the hazelnuts. Don't skip this step. It's time to make the cookie dough. I've got my flour all measured out and I'm gonna go ahead and combine it with the rest of the dry ingredients. That includes baking powder, baking soda, and kosher salt. And we're back to the melted butter. So I've got some brown sugar and some white sugar. And once that's done, go ahead and add one egg. And we're gonna go ahead and add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And finally, to bring the dough together, we're gonna add the dry ingredients into the wet ingredients. What I've got here is some dark chocolate. So the like bitterness of the dark chocolate will help balance out that sweetness. At this point, enough time has passed that you're able to kind of handle your candied hazelnuts. Um, they should have cooled into this really cool slab of like, candied hazelnut brill. For these cookies, I've gone ahead and I've chopped them up into smaller pieces. I really like to use this handy cookie dough scoop. I've lined this with parchment paper to prevent the cookies from sticking. I like to reserve some of the mix in and just like stick them on each cookie dough ball. I've got my favorite chopping board, which happens to be the state of Oregon. You can see the candied hazelnuts has melted a little bit and kind of hardened again into the, to create this like caramel shell. It's really, really good. Happy holidays from my family to yours. Looks good. Thank you so much, Chef. All right, only two states left. Can you believe it? We'll head to Hawaii and Alaska for some tasty local treats. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to our first ever Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. We've got just two states to go. First up, get some gloves and pull up those snow pants. We are headed to Alaska. Hi everyone, Chef Mandy Dixon here, coming to you from the Tufty Bay Lodge kitchen near Homer, Alaska. Here in Alaska, we rely a lot on the natural world. We often forage and preserve our wild ingredients. And today I have some raspberries that I gathered in the summer. And now I get to use them to bake up a homemade cookie twist on a classic, the s'mores. So let's get started and make wild berry s'mores cookies. Okay, I have our frozen raspberries that I processed in a food processor and strained through a fine mesh strainer. And I'm gonna add in our powdered gelatin and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on top to bloom. While our gelatin's blooming, I'm gonna start cooking our sugar 
While our sugar is cooking, we're going to whip our egg whites uh, just until frothy with a little bit of salt. Okay, our sugar has reached 248 degrees. So we're going to turn the heat off. We're going to remove our thermometer and our berries have bloomed with the gelatin and we're going to add in the berry mixture into the sugar. And now we're going to slowly pour in our berry mixture into our egg whites and whip the mixture until it's doubled in size. We can remove the bowl here and pour it into our prepared 8 by 8 by 2 inch cake pan. And I'm going to use a lightly oiled spatula to help even out the top of our marshmallows. We're going to sprinkle a little bit more powdered sugar on the top. And we're going to leave it to set overnight. So here I have our graham cracker dough that I've uh, placed into about a half inch round and chilled in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. And I'm going to place a piece of parchment paper on top and we're going to roll it out to about an eighth inch thick. Slowly peel our parchment paper off of the top. We're going to use our two inch round cutter again to cut out our cookies. I'm just docking the cookie dough here with a fork to release the steam during the baking process, which will allow the cookie to bake evenly with no air pockets. All right, I'm just gonna slide this parchment paper with our cookies onto a sheet pan and put them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes. Okay, our graham crackers have finished baking and they're nice and golden brown and we're ready to assemble. So first we're going to take a small dollop of melted chocolate and we're gonna place it right in the middle of the cookie and secure one of our wild berry marshmallows right on top. Okay, next we're gonna take our handheld torch and we're gonna torch the top of the marshmallow just like you would over a campfire and secure the other graham cracker on top. We're gonna take the cookie and dip halfway into our dark chocolate. Sprinkle with our chopped toasted almonds, our dehydrated blueberries, and a little bit of Alaska sea salt. All right, we let our cookies cool completely on the rack and they're ready to serve. Our Wildberry Alaskan S'mores cookie. Merry Christmas from my family to yours. Aloha everyone, my name is Chef Sheldon Simeon and I am in my home kitchen representing the great state of Hawaii. I grew up on a big island as a third generation Filipino and I love sharing Hawaii's local food with the world. Today I'm going to be showing you how to bake chocolate birthday cake butter mochi. These chewy, dense, squishy coconut and rice flour cake bars are a cousin of the Filipino bibinka and are one of the island's most loved desserts. So we're going to start with the chocolate chips and butter in a bowl. I've already melted it in the microwave at 30 second increments. To that, I'm gonna stir in my sugar, stirring that till it's nice and combined. Next, I'm gonna add in my eggs, adding them one at a time and then stirring them in. I'm gonna add the rest of the wet ingredients and that's gonna be the vanilla extract, my evaporated milk, and finally, full fat coconut milk. we we'll take our whisk and combine that till they're all mixed up. Try not to get some on the table. <laughs> to my large mixing bowl, I'm gonna add my mochiko flour. I'm gonna add my cocoa powder and then my baking powder. We'll stir that slightly before we combine it Gently scraping the bottom of the bowl 
making sure everything is well incorporated. When the batter is totally smooth, we're gonna pour it into the grease nine by 13 baking pan. Super simple frosting, two ingredients. We've got classic peanut butter here. If you want to, you could use natural peanut butter. For me, I'm going with the classic. Then we're gonna take some terminado sugar. So we've got the cake out of the oven. I've let it slightly cool down just a bit. Top this off. Just using a spatula, I'm trying to get this nice and easy. We're gonna finish this off with some red, white, and blue sprinkles. Same colors as our Hawaii state flag. White, sprinkled with some red. I'm gonna take a knife and cut them into some squares. Beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing. Chewy, squishy, chocolatey. Happy holidays from my ohana to yours. Well, folks, we did it. A wrap on today's first ever Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. More than 50 chefs in 50 states plus Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. Can you believe it? We hope you discovered some delicious ideas for your next holiday party and hope you had as much fun as we did. All of the recipes from the show are available on today.com. So head to our website or simply scan that QR code. And to those who made a donation, thank you so much for your generosity this holiday season. We hope you had an amazing time watching today's Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. From all of us at Today, have a wonderful, holiday season. It's the Great American Holiday Cookie Swap on Today All Day. This year, we're celebrating the season in a big way, bringing you 52 delicious and delectable cookie recipes from all across the country to ring in the holiday cheer. Coming up, beloved bloggers, seasoned chefs, and food-savvy friends will all be sharing tasty hometown treats. Fancy a beautiful Buckeye Diamond from Ohio? How about cookie cow fudge from Wisconsin? Well, just keep watching. Over the next four hours, we are going coast to coast, starting in the Northeast. Then we'll head over to the South then over to the Midwest, the Southwest, and finally the West Coast. We have an amazing lineup for you today. Celebrity chefs like Duff Goldman and Christina Tosi will be joining us. And you don't want to miss special recipes from Layla Ali and Martina McBride, plus a few members of the Today family, including yours truly, will be sharing our favorite cookies to make this time of year. Throughout the show, look for this QR code that will appear at the bottom of your screen for recipes and more information on how you can give back this season. Season. Feeding America, the country's largest network of food banks, is working to fight food insecurity. During this special, scan your smartphone here to find out how you can volunteer or donate to help local food banks fill plates and hearts this holiday season. So let's get baking. First up, we are kicking things off in the Today Show's home state. Take it away, Adam Richmond, repping New York. Hey, what's up? It's Adam Richmond here, and I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. So I can't wait to show you guys a real taste of my childhood. Now, hamantaschen are traditionally made for the Jewish masquerade holiday of Purim, but they are absolutely delicious any time of year. Now, to celebrate the Big Apple, I've created an apple pie filling for this classic cookie, and I just know that you and your family and friends are going to love it. I like to work with a combination of Granny Smith and Golden Delicious. So we have some brown sugar. I'm going to put that on in here. Some granulated white sugar. And we have the confectioner sugar. So like every good apple pie filling, we're going to add a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of vanilla, and apple pie spice. And of course, we're going to add some cornstarch. We want to make sure that there's no lumps of dry ingredients or there's some well, pardon me, but kind of naked apples. So now we're gonna cook this all down and make a nice, ooey, gooey, sweet and sticky apple pie filling for the center of our hamantash. But we don't wanna put this directly into the pan because it'll burn, especially with all that sugar. So that little bit of fat is gonna help coat the pan and also 
you know, everything's better with butter. Make sure it coats the whole bottom of the pan. And essentially, we want it to be close to almost like a caramel apple you get at the fair. And you see how it moves all together? As we say in Brooklyn, bing bang. This is what we're looking for. Take it off the heat. Oh man, it smells like a Norman Rockwell painting makes you feel. First off, we have some cubes of chilled butter. It's gonna create a beautiful color, beautiful smell, and a real great richness and flakiness to the dough itself. So we have two and a half cups of flour. To that, we're going to add some confectioner's sugar. We're gonna add baking powder, not baking soda. And then, of course, we're gonna keep that theme going with those wonderful warm spices. Anyway, we're gonna throw in two pinches of salt right into the dough. And then we want to add about a teaspoon of orange zest. Uh, my grandma, my great aunt used to add orange juice. Remember, you don't want to go down to what's called the pith, which is the white layer. We want that top orange layer, which has all of the real essential oils that go into an orange. Let's go over to the food processor. So we have our butter. We have some brown sugar. We're going to pulse this together till it has the consistency of almost sand, like clumpy sand. To that, we're going to add a little bit of vanilla extract and two eggs. We're gonna pulse it again. So now we've combined the wet, we're gonna slowly add in a little bit of that dry. Now, if you have a big work surface at home, you can actually uh, put flour on it and you want to work as quickly as you can while it's cold. And you want to roll this dough out till it's about an eighth of an inch thick. So outside in, you want to work in all the different directions. So a beautiful rolled out dough right here. So you can use a ring cutter. I actually use a pint glass. Take it, give it a little bit of a twist. And there you go, we have it. Put it right here onto our sheet pan. There we go. So we're gonna take a dollop of this filling. Don't overfill. I can't stress this enough. You want it to be like a little bit of a burst of flavor. So you wanna put it in the center, but you wanna make sure that there's ample room all around. Take a brush, dip it in the egg wash, and we want to brush all the way around the round of the cookie. That's going to help it stick even during the cooking process. So what I like to do is I take two ends and I make essentially a cone. See, cone, it has the juice. So I take this, now we have this sort of fan shape. I bring these up, give it a pinch, and there's the hamantash. And now we want to go back in with the egg wash and really get on those folds first and foremost. And there's your hamantasha. I'll repeat that just in case you missed it the first time. All right, these are stuffed, these are folded. Throw them into a 375 degree oven for 10 to 12 minutes till they're golden brown. Here they are, fresh, golden, and delicious. Apple pie hamantasha representing New York. I dressed for the occasion, representing my junicorn roots. And whether or not you're even in the great state of New York, wherever you are, whoever you are, however you celebrate your holidays, whatever you eat, may your holidays be sweet. I'm Tiffany Faison, and I'm making gorgeous fluffernutter cookies from the great state of Massachusetts. Fluffernutter sandwiches are a New England icon. They're peanut butter and sweet marshmallow fluff in a sandwich together. We love them so much, we have a festival to celebrate fluff every year. We're starting with our dry ingredients. Here we have our flour, baking soda, and baking powder. And then we just wanna give those a quick whisk just to combine. Now that we have our dries mixed, we are gonna head to butter town. So it starts with about two cups of butter. This is room temperature butter. Pretty important that it is room temperature. We're gonna add the other butter, the peanut butter. So can't have a fluffernutter sandwich without peanut butter. Throw this in here. It's gonna get a little gooey and a little messy. Guys, it's cookie time, it's the holidays. Nothing to get concerned about.
We want this gorgeous, airy, fluffy mix. That's what we're looking for. So to this mixture, to our peanut butter and butter mixture, we're gonna add light brown sugar. And granulated sugar. Same thing, scrape down, let it fly. This is our vanilla extract. Just gonna throw that into our eggs before we add it to, just for ease of convenience. Okay, so to our mixture of peanut butter, butter, sugar, eggs, and vanilla, we're now gonna slowly add our dries. Let's get our oats in there. You don't have to be precious with them. They'll stand up to a good mixing. So now the fun part. We are going to scoop our cookie dough onto our sheet tray. We want them big because we're gonna pipe some fluff into our peanut butter cookie. It's gonna be gorgeous. So this is, for me, this is like a perfect holiday cookie. And I'd be remiss to tell you that I wait to the holidays to make this cookie. We start in Massachusetts, the minute the leaves hit the ground, there's pumpkin and apple everything around here. So I start making pumpkin breads and I start making apple butter. It's just, reminds me of why I choose to live here. So we have our cookie scoop. What we're gonna do is just take our scooper and make a little indention. Just use the back side of it. It's gonna stick a little bit, don't worry about it. Cookies are never meant to be perfect. Just like people. So to this, we have our fluff. Fluff is super versatile. We use this for everything. We fix cars, we you know spackle houses, we eat it. Just kidding. So just a little scoop of fluff in the middle. About a quarter of the total fluffernutter cookie. Just gonna pipe that in. And you could bake it just like this. You're just gonna have a fluff center. I'm gonna go ahead and just scoop the cookie around the fluff to where when it bakes, it sort of all melts together and it's combined when you eat it. So these guys are going in the oven eight to 10 minutes, 325 degrees. You can rotate the pan halfway through, make sure that they're cooked GBD, golden brown delicious, really consistently all the way through. It smells incredible in here. It smells like peanut buttery, nutty, buttery goodness. These are gorgeous. The biggest problem with these is their disappearing act that they pull. And they're crispy on the outside, chewy and fluffy on the inside. Look at that, so good. It's like the fluff equivalent of a cheese pull in a cookie. Ugh, you guys have to make these cookies. They really are straight from the heart of Massachusetts. One of my favorite holiday treats. Oh my God, so oh good. Hi everyone, I'm Zoe Francois, the host of Zoe Bakes, and I'm representing the beautiful state of Vermont. Today, I'm sharing a recipe inspired by the flavors of this beautiful state, my Vermont maple raisin holiday cookies. They're chewy and sweet from the raisins with a maple glaze, and they're absolutely perfect for holiday baking. So let's get started. To start my cookies, I'm gonna make a really simple dough. It's a very soft, sticky dough. So once you make it, you wanna wrap it up into a packet and refrigerate it for at least an hour. Once it's chilled, I'm gonna roll it on a silicone mat. I am gonna dust the sill pot with just a tiny bit of flour to prevent it from sticking. I'm gonna take my dough, put it right on top, and then I'm gonna put the plastic right back on top of the dough so that the dough won't stick to my rolling pin. I'm gonna roll this out to a nine by 11 rectangle. Once your dough is all rolled out and ready to go, I'm just gonna peel the plastic away and then I'm gonna cover it with my chopped up raisins, but you can also use craisins or any dried fruit you want. I'm gonna put that onto half of the dough. And then I'm gonna fold the other half over the raisins. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. It's okay if those raisins poke through. In fact, you really want them to. It's part of the look, and also then you know that it's thin enough. I have a sheet pan that's covered in parchment paper. 
I'm gonna use my little Christmas tree cookie cutter and I'm going to cut out my cookies. So the next thing that I need to do is put a really light egg wash on these and then I'm gonna bake them at 350 for about 12 to 15 minutes until they're really golden brown and crispy and beautiful. My cookies are totally cooled and now I'm gonna add the best part, the maple glaze. We want it to be thick enough that it's gonna cling to the cookie, but thin enough that I can just drizzle it. I like to add just a little bit of festivity to it, so some little decorative sugar pearls. It just makes them a little more holiday. And that's it. So good. Merry Christmas from my family to yours. Man, those cookies are so festive. I think I'm feeling that holiday spirit. All right, coming up, we've got a gorgeous edible centerpiece and a family recipe from my very own kitchen. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to today's Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. Up next, I've been enjoying these Christmas cookies since I was a little girl. It just isn't the holidays in my house without them. Christmas just isn't Christmas in my house without my great Aunt Tilly's cookies. They just remind me of big family dinners during the holiday season. And I love dipping these soft anise cookies into coffee. I even did it when I was little. We're going to start by mixing our dry ingredients. We're going to add baking powder to the flour. And if you need to know anything about my family, we like salt. So a nice, nice hearty pinch of salt and mix that together. So now we're going to get to the wet ingredients. We're going to start with some vegetable shortening that you want to melt and then cool. We're going to put our eggs right into the cooled vegetable shortening. We're going to add our sugar. Now my Aunt Tilly's secret was an entire bottle of anise flavoring. So when I'm mixing this together, I actually like to let it go for a little while to make it nice and fluffy. So now we're going to add some of the dry ingredients. Start off slow, otherwise you will have flour everywhere. I'm just going to scrape this down and then we can mix it by hand. 
This is where Calvin asked, can I lick the beaters? I know you're not really supposed to be doing it, but it was always the thing your mom let you do. And now looking back, it's like, well, it keeps them quiet for a few minutes. So like, here you go, have fun with that. So at this point, you can kind of make whatever size cookies you want, small, large, my Aunt Tilly actually used to get so sick of making cookies. She would make them into a nice log, and then after they bake, she would slice them. So we always had sliced cookies instead of, you know, like little round cookies. So when you put these on the tray, you don't have to worry about them spreading like some cookies do. These more or less rise. So our cookies have come out of the oven. We let them cool because you don't want to put the icing on top of the hot cookies. But I want to just show you the color. On the top, you want them to still look sort of doughy. So now we're going to make the icing, which is probably the most stressful thing I do all year because you have to get the texture of the icing just right. So we have confectioner's sugar in here. Again, start off slow, like just put a little bit of water. Once it starts to loosen up though, it, it goes pretty quickly. All right, so once we have this here, we're gonna take our cookie, just turn it upside down and give it a nice little squoosh on the top. I usually do two before I put some sprinkles on because once it starts to harden up, it's a little, the sprinkles don't stick as much. When it comes to sprinkles, only, only use these sprinkles. This is all my Aunt Tilly would use. This is all you're allowed to use. They're hard to find. They're non-pareils in multicolors. And then you just sprinkle them on top. And here they are, my great Aunt Tilly's Christmas cookies. Aren't they pretty? Happy holidays from my family to yours. Hey everyone, my name is Elijah Milligan. I lived in Philadelphia my entire life, and I'm a diehard fan of everything Philadelphia sports. Today's cookies inspired by our Philadelphia Phillies, who had a phenomenal season and really made our city proud. So today's cookie is going to be our Phillies Red October Red Velvet Cookies. This cookie combines our iconic Phillies colors, and it will make any holiday table look great, and the flavor is out of this world. So first thing first, we're gonna mix all of our dry ingredients. So we have our AP flour, we have our cocoa powder, baking soda, and sea salt. We're just gonna give this a little whisk. Next step, we're going to cream our butter and sugar. We're just gonna add room temp butter and sugar to the stand mixer and beat it for about five minutes so light and fluffy. We're just gonna go a medium speed I think four should do the trick. Now we're gonna add one egg and we're gonna scrape down the sides of the bowl as well. And then we're gonna turn this back on at low speed. We're gonna add our vanilla extract, our buttermilk, and then our red food coloring as well. So we're gonna mix this until combined. Look at this bright, beautiful color. Reminds me of Christmas. Reminds me of the Phillies making it all the way to the uh, World Series. So next we're gonna mix the dried ingredients. I want to let this go till it's fully incorporated. Oh, these look awesome. All right, this looks ready to go. So we're going to turn this off, scrape any extra off of our paddle. Then we're going to fold in our chocolate chips. Oh, this looks really fun. Make sure those are nicely incorporated. Oh, a little bit extra. This is red, man. This is Christmas. This is Phillies. All in one bite. So we have a tray ready to go with some parchment. We're just gonna scoop these with a one ounce scoop, leaving a little bit of space in between. So they are gonna spread. Next up, we're gonna lightly press down on each mound. And that's just gonna flatten it slightly. They don't have to be perfect. You want a little rustic shape to these. So next up, we're gonna bake these off at 350, and that should take about 12 minutes. All right, so these have cooled completely. I've already started putting some powdered sugar on these. It just smells so good in here. These look nice and festive. Mmm, delicious, warm, tastes like Christmas. Merry Christmas and happy holidays from my Philly table to yours. Hey everyone, I'm Skylar Bouchard and I'm representing the state of Delaware. I grew up in Delaware and although we're known as the small wonder, our state is full of so many big personalities. So I decided to make big, bold, and flavorful cookies, the sweet corn cookie with a blueberry pie swirl. Our first step is to make the filling. It all starts with frozen blueberries, which I'm adding to a saucepan. And then we're gonna add 
a third of a cup of sugar. And we're just going to coat the blueberries until they're fully coated. They look like sugar covered blueberries. We're gonna work on our thickener, which is so easy. It's just a third cup of water, a teaspoon of lemon juice. We're gonna add two tablespoons of cornstarch right to the water. We're essentially making a slurry. And we wanna mix this until all the clumps have dissolved so it's nice and smooth. I can hear our blueberries heating up. The perfect time. We're gonna add all of this right to the blueberries and mix this up. Now we're just gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt and this really enhances that blueberry flavor and makes it taste more like blueberries. Trust me on that. <laughs> so we're gonna cook this over medium high heat and bring it to a boil, then reduce to a simmer, cook for 10 minutes, just stirring every minute or so until it's nice and thick. Now we're gonna work on our dry ingredients. This is so easy, you just whisk them all together in a bowl. So we're starting with two and two thirds cup of all purpose flour, then the main character, masa harina. This is used in yellow corn tortillas and it gives a really distinct corn aroma. Our next ingredient, corn starch. It's a teaspoon of kosher salt, one and a quarter teaspoons of baking soda, and half a teaspoon of baking powder. It's the dry ingredients. It was so easy. <laughs> now we're gonna make our dough. It starts by using chilled butter and creaming it with light brown sugar and white sugar. So I just finished creaming my butter and sugar. Now we're gonna add our eggs in. I have two chilled eggs and I'm gonna run this on low speed. So my eggs are all combined. I'm gonna put this on low speed and gradually add in my dry ingredients. All right, I'm gonna use a spatula to help me guide it in. Just a little bit out of time so it doesn't go flying everywhere. It's now time to make our cookies. So what I did is I separated my dough into 10 equal sized balls and we're just going to flatten one of these in the palm of our hands. So these are about half an inch thick like this and we're gonna basically make an empanada. We're gonna scoop our delicious filling and pop it in the middle. You see this? So we're gonna bring the edges around to encase this filling. And it's okay if the filling comes out because that's just gonna give you a beautiful swirl later. Delicious mistakes, let me tell you. And we're gonna roll this into a ball, just carefully close any holes. So I'm dipping this into some crushed corn flakes for a nice delicious crunch and some more corn flavor. And I'm putting it on a baking sheet that I lined with nonstick spray. So I'm gonna do this four more times, put five on this baking sheet and five on another baking sheet because they do spread out in the oven. We wanna give them enough room to do their thing. So I let these cool for 10 minutes and now they are ready to serve. They are gooey and soft and delicious. My husband, I can see him in the corner of my eye. He's been so excited for these cookies. <laughs> I know, wow, I know you want yes. these. <laughs> you gotta crack one open with me. Can I grab grab one? this one. It looks okay. like a juicy beauty. Oh, yeah. All right, ready? Oh, oh. look at that filling! <laughs> cheers. Right, cheers. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. Mm. That's the stuff. You did it. Mm. Oh my god, yeah! <laughs> these cookies are so good. Clearly my dog wants them, my husband loves them. So happy holidays from my family to yours. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more holiday sweet treats from Aaron French, Nick DiGiovanni, and more chefs from the Northeast.
Welcome back to today's Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. Up next, edible Christmas trees that are truly almost too pretty to eat and an iconic treat from Maine. Hi everyone, I'm John Cannell, founder of Preppy Kitchen, and there is nothing better than Christmas in Connecticut. From the picturesque decorations around town to snowy walks, it's a wonderful place to celebrate the holidays. One of my favorite traditions is decorating our tree as a family, so today I'm making nutmeg Christmas cookie trees. I love a show-stopping centerpiece, and this edible one is actually surprisingly easy to make. Start with a big batch of cookie dough. Mine has two secret ingredients. A little bit of cornstarch will give you a nice sharp edge so your cookies don't spread. And a dash of nutmeg is a wonderful flavor for the holidays. Connecticut's the nutmeg state. We love spices during the holidays. And as an added bonus, I always freshly grate mine for added flavor. I'm rolling my dough out to about a quarter of an inch. Our cookies should have a nice structure so they don't fall apart when we stack them. Once your dough's rolled out, it's time to cut your star shapes. We're gonna stack these up at the end. We're gonna transfer these onto a parchment-lined baking sheet. They just need a little bit of space in between each cookie. They don't spread that much. The bottom layers are really big, so you will be re-rolling all the scraps. If you wanna have extra height and drama, you're gonna to wanna to cut extra cookies to place in between each level. They're gonna be hidden, so they're gonna be smaller shapes, but they're gonna send lift your cookie tree up and make it look that much more realistic. My stars are all cut out. It's time to bake them 375 for about 12 minutes or until they're just taking on a golden color at the edge. Our cookies are baked and cooled golden brown underneath, so it's time to grab a cake plate and assemble them. I mixed up a big batch of buttercream. This has vanilla and nutmeg in it as well. It's a lovely combination of flavors. And for the green, I just used some green food coloring. We don't want this to move around a lot, so add a dollop of buttercream underneath. That's our glue. We're gonna add more buttercream. It's gonna add as our glue and hold everything together. You can use an offset spatula or any other tool you enjoy just to smooth things out so you have a nice flat layer of buttercream. Now we're gonna use a number 30 star tip. You could use any smaller star tip that you have hanging around. It's just gonna give you some texture and make it look like our tree is a little bit more realistic. Little dollops all over the surface of everything you see. Don't worry about the spacer, just the parts that are sticking out. And if it doesn't look perfect, it's totally okay. We're gonna cover this in Christmas ornaments, a little bit of snow, and you're not gonna be able to see any details. Time for the next layer. Just add some buttercream on top of your spacer, pop the next layer on, and repeat. Our tree is complete, but it's a little bit bare, so it's time to decorate it up to the hilt. We want all the ornaments on here, snow, and of course, a big golden star for the top. I like to start off with a light dusting of snow. We can always add more later, but it's so satisfying and it really makes it come to life. For the decorations, you have so many choices. I happen to have some jumbo sprinkles. They also sell like little chocolate candy covered spheres that you could use. You can make them out of marzipan or anything else. This Christmas tree looks nice, but it's definitely missing a star. So set this aside for just a moment and we're gonna grab some gold luster dust and another cookie. One star for the top. I'm gonna brush it with a little bit of glaze. You want a very thin coating just to make it sticky so it grabs the gold luster dust. Place your star on top and you're ready to celebrate the holidays. I made an extra one to try out. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Mm. Hi today all day. I'm Erin French and I'm representing the great state of Maine. I'm bringing you a twist on a classic treat with my parsnip needums. They're usually made with mashed potatoes and are a great way to use leftovers in a unique way. I've spent my entire life in Maine and I'm excited to show off a tried and true sweet from our great state. I'm going to start with a, a bit of mashed parsnips. A parsnip is a cross between a potato and a carrot, and I'm just going to add in a little bit of butter, and then some confectionery sugar. And I'm just going to stir it until the butter and the sugar start to melt. I know my Mainers might be a little bit upset with me calling this a cookie, but I want to vote for it to be a steak cookie because I don't think we have one. Now the next thing is we're going to add in this flaked coconut. 
And then also um, a little bit of vanilla because that always makes the flavor a bit better. And you're just gonna work it to kind of make it almost like a dough. So you're gonna get the sweetness of the sugar, the creaminess of the butter, a little bit of vanilla, and then the crunch of that really delicious coconut. Now we've got this perfect, nice and sticky mixture here. This is how we're gonna form them. And I just make little pucks. It almost looks like a peppermint patty. That's kind of what I'm going for. These are pretty rich. There's a lot of sugar and you've got all the coconut. So it's not something you want a lot of. So a nice small size is really perfect. You just want a few bites, like three bites is the perfect bite for this. Classic Maine Needhams are actually made on a sheet pan and then you would slice them into squares. So you can do that too. This is totally gluten free which is kind of a nice thing to have if you're doing a swap because then you don't have to worry about dietary restrictions. I'm just gonna put it in the fridge and let this set up for an hour. We have a little bit of melted chocolate with some coconut oil. We go ahead and dunk them in. Move them around a little bit so they get nice and coated. And I'm just gonna carry on and finish the rest of them. And after they set for a second, you can sprinkle them with some salt. I'm making sure that I get both sides because I want chocolate on both sides so you get that perfect bite every time you bite into one. I'm gonna sprinkle them with a little bit of Malden salt. And I love Malden salt for finishing because it's flaky and it's a little crunchy. Once your chocolate's set, you're just ready to plate and share. These remind me of the holidays because they always felt like a special treat when I was a girl. If I got to get one off the counter at the convenience store, it felt special. So if I'm thinking about holidays and I'm thinking about something that tastes like Maine, this is, this is it for me. Merry Christmas and enjoy. Stay tuned, we'll be back with more cookies. Welcome back to the Great American Holiday Cookies Swap, folks. This next treat will definitely be a crowd pleaser at any gathering this time of year. Four score and seven years ago, I, Paola Velez, am one of Washington, D.C.'s most iconic pastry chefs, I think.
Today, I'm making Rock Creek Park cookies, an homage to one of Washington, D.C.'s largest nature spaces. So, let's get baking. The first thing that I'm going to do is brown my butter. But it's not brown butter per se, it's like toasty butter. Once you start smelling it, once you start seeing, your butter is done. So this toasted butter is what makes my cookies fluffy because it still has a little bit of that moisture. So our butter is now cooled and you can see because when you scrape it, it's nice and firm. We're going to add our granulated sugar. So we're gonna make sure that we get all of the delicious butter in here. So we're gonna set it on like speed one first. Now we're gonna do our eggs. And as that's mixing, we're gonna make sure that we add our vanilla. So here we have some all-purpose flour, kosher salt, and some baking soda. I'm gonna put in like half, and we're gonna do almost like a mixer shuffle. So, let's incorporate the rest of it. So we're gonna stop here. We have our mini marshmallows, and these guys represent like the white oak trees that line Rock Creek Park. Candy coated chocolate rocks. It's gonna be rocks that belong in Rock Creek Park. A little bit of 70% dark chocolate. Washington DC is kind of serious. And this chocolate is serious. We're gonna add walnut pieces as well. And this is gonna lend a little bit of earthiness. We can't forget the sour cherries. Cherries are Washington DC's national fruit, but also George Washington, am I right? And cue earrings. We're ready to get scooping. So we're gonna do two of these scoops per cookie. So I'm just gonna add one right here, and then add one right on top. And then we're gonna shape them. So for this cookie, I wanna do two scoops because I really want to get that volume, but I want a little bit more spread. So we're gonna shape these guys. We're gonna make sure that we press in, and just a little slight squish, and there you have it. So we've baked our beautiful cookies. And then for that last and final minute, I take a cookie cutter that's round and I shape them while they're hot, bake them for more last minute so that we can get one beautiful round Rock Creek Park cookie. And there you have it, gentle peoples, Rock Creek Park cookies. Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad, and enjoy. Mmm. Hi everybody, my name is John Bawadi. I'm the chef and owner of Bearded Baking Company, and I am representing New Hampshire, the beautiful state that I was born and raised. To me, there's nothing better than a crisp fall night, roasting marshmallows, making s'mores by the bonfire. So today I'm making campfire cookies inspired by those good times. These cookies are ooey, gooey, and delicious. They embody everything that I love about New Hampshire. So let's get started. We're gonna prep up all of our ingredients. So to begin, we will add all of our dries into one mixing bowl. Next, we will cream our sugar and butter together. Scrape the edges and then we will add our egg. And then we'll add our one teaspoon of vanilla. I have a half teaspoon here, so we'll add two of those. Right, and we'll mix that until it's just incorporated, and then we will add our dry ingredients. And then as your dough starts to combine and come together, you're gonna wanna add your chocolate chips, marshmallows, and graham crackers as well. And then we just wanna lightly mix these into the batter here. Once our dough is combined, we can start to scoop the cookies. I will be making some golf ball shaped size cookies with my hands, but if you'd like to use a cookie scoop, you can definitely do that as well. And you wanna be putting these on a parchment lined sheet pan. All right. 
Once we have our cookies rolled out, we can start to add some additional um, chunks of graham crackers and chocolate chips and marshmallows as well. Once your cookies are prepared, we're ready to go into the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes. After about 10 to 13 minutes, you're looking for the chocolate to melt, those marshmallows to be golden brown and nice and ooey and gooey, and your cookies are done. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Hey, I'm Nick DiGiovanni, and today I'm representing my home state of Rhode Island. I learned my love for biscotti through my great-grandmother, Noni, who immigrated from Italy. And today I've created my own spin, a brown butter almond biscotti, which I'm gonna show you how to make right now. So first we're gonna start out by making our dough, and for that I'm gonna begin with a large bowl, and then into that bowl go in with some brown butter, one of my favorite ingredients in all of food and cooking. You really have to make sure you scrape out all those really tasty milk solid bits because that's what gives you the real flavor of brown butter. Now into this bowl, I'm gonna go in with some vegetable oil. The traditional way of making biscotti actually only uses eggs, but it's changed a lot over the years. And even my great grandmother would say that there is no set way to make biscotti. Into this bowl, I'm gonna add a little bit of brown sugar and then add in our white sugar as well. And we're gonna go ahead and mix all of this together. As a kid, I'd always eat about half the mixture before we added in the rest of the ingredients. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and add in three eggs, but we wanna do them one at a time. I've been practicing my one-handed egg crack for many years now. Not necessarily for speed, it's more just a nice little trick to have up your sleeve. After this is well combined, I'm gonna go ahead and add in a little splash of vanilla extract. I have a homemade bottle of vanilla extract that I've been working with for a little over two years now and then just a little splash of almond extract to give it that almond flavor that we're looking for in this biscotti. But you can really flavor yours however you like. Stir that up until combined. I've already combined my flour and baking powder in this bowl here, so I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. And then we wanna go ahead and mix this all together until it's just combined. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle in a generous amount of my slivered almonds. You can put as many or as little as you want. Whenever you're baking, as long as you're having fun, I feel like the rest doesn't really matter. Next up, we'll grab a parchment or sulfat lined sheet pan and go ahead and add that dough ball right into the center. Then we're gonna go ahead and shape this into a nice log. For biscotti, it's really not gonna change very much as it bakes. And to finish before baking, I also like to sprinkle a few slivered almonds right over the top. Then all we have to do now is bake until lightly golden and puffy, about 25 minutes at 375 Fahrenheit. This has been cooling for about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and transfer it right onto the cutting board. So we're gonna cut at an angle here, slightly diagonally, and as we cut, aim to get about half inch slices. You can use a serrated knife for this portion if you like, but I sometimes just take one of my sharper knives and that makes it just as easy. Just make sure you're cutting at the proper time, because if you let it cool for too long, it's gonna to be too dry and crumbly to actually cut. Once we finish slicing these, we're gonna go ahead and layer them out, cut side down, and you can use the very same parchment or sheet that you used to bake them the first time. Just make sure as you lay them out that you're leaving some space between each of them. All right, my favorite part. Once the biscotti have finished baking, I've let them cool, they've hardened, so it's time to see what they taste like. Oh my God. It's such a sweet, comforting, crumbly cookie, and that perfect combination of brown butter and almond is what really makes this a treat for me. I literally could eat biscotti any time of the day. All right, we'll be back soon with more holiday cookies from Layla Ali, Duff Goldman, and our very own Craig Melvin, making a twist on his mother's signature oatmeal raisin cookie.
Welcome back to the Great American Holiday Cookie Swap. The Northeast definitely brought the sweet holiday spirit. So let's see if our next region is ready to impress. We are headed south from Virginia to Kentucky, Florida to Louisiana. We are about to cover a huge portion of our country. Look out for cake guru Duff Goldman and our own Craig Melvin coming up soon. But let's kick things off with a true legend, Layla Ali with a sweet tribute to her father. Hello, I'm Layla Ali, and today I'm honoring my father, the greatest of all time, Muhammad Ali. I'm gonna be making my knockout bourbon butter pecan chocolate chip cookies. So I'm gonna show you how to be the champion of the holiday cookie swap. You ready to get started? All right, so first we're gonna start with our dry ingredients. I have some one-to-one -one gluten free all purpose flour, and I'm going to add some baking soda. We're just gonna mix these together until combined. And now I'm gonna head over to the stove and make my bourbon butter pecan mixture. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my stove on medium, add our butter to the pot. Let that start melting down. Putting the pecans in the pan like this, give them a chance to get infused with that brown sugar and that bourbon and that butter. And I'm telling you, all of these steps really make a difference as you're layering on the flavor of this cookie. Kentucky is known for their bourbon, so I had to make sure I included it in this cookie recipe. So my father actually didn't drink alcohol, so if I was making these cookies for him specifically, I probably wouldn't use the bourbon or I would use bourbon flavoring. It does cook off once you put it to the heat, and then of course we're going to put these cookies in the oven. But, you know, it's dad, so I would make them his way. I'm going to go ahead and let this cool for about 10 to 15 minutes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start making the batter. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this room temperature butter into my bowl. And then I'm gonna add the butter mixture. Butter on butter. <laughs> then I'm going to add my brown sugar, granulated sugar. Go ahead and give this a mix. And now we're gonna go ahead and add two eggs, some vanilla extract, and this batter is coming together really nicely. So now I'm gonna go ahead and fold in these dry ingredients. This cookie dough really start to form. Add our chocolate chips. I like to add a mix of milk chocolate and semi-sweet chocolate. So when I said that this recipe was inspired by one of my father's favorite treats, it's because he loved a good chocolate chip cookie. I can remember coming to visit him when he used to come in town and we'd come to the hotel and they'd be ordering room service and there were always cookies on the tray. Cookies and milk were some of my father's favorite treats. And now for the fun part, we're gonna go ahead and form our cookies. So what I like to do is just take a regular kitchen spoon and roll them into balls. And then I actually like to flatten them. Just standing here making these cookies brings back so many memories of my father. It's funny because there's so many ways that we are alike. I didn't want to embrace the butterfly and the bee, you know, with my father's famous saying, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. But now that he's not here, I'm always trying to find ways to incorporate him into my life, even down to the butterfly logo. All right, so these cookies are done and ready to go in the oven. These cookies smell so good. And I know if my father was here to eat one, he would totally want two scoops of vanilla ice cream to go with this. So it would be cookies a la mode for him. <laughs> In fact, I like the size of this cookie because you can totally make an ice cream sandwich with them. These are my knockout bourbon butter pecan chocolate chip cookies. Try them because I know you're gonna love them. Up next, more sweet treats from the South. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Duff Goldman and I have been operating Charm City Cakes out of Baltimore, Maryland since 2002. And today I am demoing a cookie from Baltimore that's been around for over a hundred years. So a burger cookie is like, it's kind of somewhere in between a cookie and a cake and it is piled high with frosting. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do is make the actual cookie. So what I'm going to do is cream together some butter and some sugar. So here is five and a half tablespoons of butter and here's the sugar. 
a little bit of salt. Always a little bit of salt. So I turn the mixer on. I'm going to start it slow because I don't want to make a big mess. And then once it gets going, I can really like speed it up. I have a screen. You can use any kind of mesh strainer. I'm just going to dump my flour in here and my baking powder. Isn't that satisfying? <laughs> turn the mixer back on. And I'm going to add about half the flour. I have an egg and some vanilla. So now I'm going to add about half of that liquid. As much as you can. I mean, it's an egg. Now I'm going to add the other half of the flour. And then the rest of the egg mixture. So I have a cookie scoop here. Uh, this is like inch and a half, inch and a quarter, something like that. I'm gonna scoop some of the batter, but then make sure you scrape it on the side of the bowl and really make sure that it gets flat on one side. Drop it onto the paper, just like that. So now what I like to do is once I have the cookies scooped out, I like to clean them up a little bit. So I put a little bit of water on my fingers and then any sort of like little thing that's sticking out, just kind of pat it back down like that. So these are going to go in the oven at 400 degrees on the middle rack for like seven to 10 minutes or so. You want to bake these until you just start to see a little bit of color right near the tray. So this is my chocolate frosting. It's just chocolate, cream, salt, uh, a little bit of corn syrup melted on the stove. And now I'm just going to add powdered sugar to it. and just spread just a tiny bit. You don't need a lot. Just spread some on the flat side of the cookie. And then we're gonna let that dry. Okay, there we go. So now we're gonna let these cookies cool. Then we're gonna let this frosting cool. And then we're gonna really add the correct amount of frosting. So now you're gonna put a ridiculous amount of frosting on it. That's for me what really makes burger cookies amazing is how much of the pretty sweet frosting. Sprinkle on top like that, but you can also just dunk it in there, which is pretty amazing. All right, well, I got my whole family here and it is time to eat some cookies. Mm. Are you ready? Here you go. That one has the most frosting. Oh, that's for mommy. That's for mommy. A baby wants a cookie. You're welcome. Can I have a bite? Have a sweet holiday season. It's time to dig in. <laughs> All right, the oven is warm and we've got more chefs ready to show off their signature holiday cookies. Stick around.